on, on Saturday afternoon, this past Saturday, <clears throat> we had uh, UFC, we had Bellator, we had KSW, and we had Glory Kickboxing, Glory Collision 3, all happening at the exact same time Saturday afternoon. This man was one half of the most exciting and best fight of the afternoon slash evening. Uh, he was taken to deep waters. His, his soul was tested. His heart was tested. But in the end, he is and still the reigning defending glory heavyweight champion of the world. He is the man in the world of heavyweight kickboxing. He is the man in terms of glory kickboxing. He is the face of glory kickboxing. And he is the reigning defending champ. He's the one and only Rico Verhoeven, who's kind enough to join us once again on the program. Rico, how are you, my friend? What's up, Ariel? I'm good. How are you? This uh, is my new interview. Yeah. Uh, mode. I'm just keeping my hand right here. <laughs> yes, very strategic where your hand is placed right now, my friend. Could I be rude what and you ask mean? you to move your hand? <laughs> <laughs> What's it look like? Oh, that's not so bad. Uh, it's not so bad. Uh, it's a lot better. It's a lot better than it was. Oh my god, it was uh, my. It was uh, this eye was like shut, but I've been like putting ice on it like all day, every day. So uh, no, it's it's pretty good actually. So how many stitches? <laughs> I just start. No, no, that's like cool, six. man. Six? That's yeah. not so bad. Does it hurt? Yes, sir. No, 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 nothing. Nothing. Good. Is it true? I read nothing, this story no. that uh, your 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 phone didn't recognize you. Is that true? <laughs> Don't really have to answer that. <laughs> Listen, yeah, you're a legend. It was, it was the worst. Really? It was the worst. I was, uh, so, but of course, people make 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 jokes. So after the fight at the press conference, the post fight press conference, so Rico for make fun of me. Does your phone face recognition still work? Oh my so, god. Well, so I don't know, but let me try. Well, it did it. So, oh, that was perfect for that moment. It was perfect. I was like. Come on, you gotta work. Yeah. You gotta work. I was trying to put it on the good on the good side, but no, it didn't want to work. So it's incredible it how well that was. stuff uh, worked. And I'm assuming now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now it works again. Now it works again. Great. Um, yeah. I I said on Saturday, and I'm not going to call myself you know an expert, but I said on Saturday, I think that of all your, I always watch when you fight, of all your title defenses yes, that that may have been the toughest test. That was the one where you really had to dig down deep. Is that a fair statement or do you disagree? Mm. Uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty good statement, but uh, uh, bother too. Um, I was like mentally not in a, in a good space. So for me, that, that felt harder. So, but this like probably physically, uh, it looked uh, it looked a lot harder. But it this was like much easier to go through mentally. And that other fight, I was just like really like more fighting with myself than uh, fighting with my opponent. And now I was like constantly still in the fight. Of course, make two million for what I saw. Looking back at the fight, I made some, I made two serious mistakes. Uh, of which one was the was the eye, and for the rest, yeah, I was still pretty much in that fight. What were the mistakes? Can you tell us? Can you elaborate? Yeah, standing still. <laughs> That's it. Not moving. Oh, and uh, sorry, this is a hard hitting big guy, and yeah. You know, standing still right in front of the, the right hand is not the smartest thing to do. And that's why for me, it was hard, especially in the beginning, to enjoy the victory. My teammates came in the ring like, oh, shit, you're the man. Oh, amazing. Good job. You showed heart. You got this. And I was just like, man, I fucked up because that's what that's how it feels. That's how it uh, felt it's a little bit a little bit better now but that's how it felt at that moment for me because it just feels like yeah like i fucked up because i'm i'm always looking to to perform the best way possible to make um uh, yeah not too many mistakes and then making because this felt like a big mistake versus a guy like this because th these are the things you got to watch out for so but afterwards yeah it, came, it became better 
it was it was a surreal scene and it was a it was like a kind of scary scene when you're watching you get knocked down like that and rocked like that because we don't often see you get rocked like that. How long did it take yeah. you to regain your bearings? How how long were you dealing with that? No, I was pretty good actually. I was just like it was just uh, like a flash knockout knockdown. Just boom. I went down. Uh I was down to get another another smack in the back yeah. of the neck and but I, my my butt didn't even touch the ground. I was like on one arm, right, right, just sitting there. All right, boop. I stood up, get back in the corner, get my eight count, relax, breathe. But I felt the eye close, and I felt the, the the blood dripping from my face on my chest. And then you start feeling the urge of, all right, we gotta put the pedal to the metal because the doctor might just stop this fight. Yeah, because of course I I can't see what's going on in my face. So if it's if it's bad or it's not bad, is it is it at what spot is it? So yeah, that was what it was. So from that moment on, I just yeah thought hands up, and let's go. Um, at any point, were you really afraid that the doctors would stop the fight? Did you feel like it was close? Uh, the second the the second time. So the first time, um. Uh, the referee stopped it, went to the doctor. The doctor said, yo, can you see? Said, yep, you can see. All right, perfect. Put the blood away. Said, yep, all right, it's good, continue. And then again, the, the the referee made the doctor look at it. And I was like, okay, you good, you good, all right, let's go. <laughs> let's just keep going, let's keep going. So, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was happy that I was just able to continue and, yeah, do what we do best. And at that point, left eye, like, can you see anything out of that eye? At that moment? Yeah, like well, once it starts to get a lot worse, is it completely shut or you can see a little bit out of it? Yeah, no, yeah, it was almost completely shut. Wow. Have you ever been in a position oh, like this uh, in your career where you, you're fighting out of one? Wow, what yep. is that like? No, but for me, it was just like, even if this eye is closed, I can I can still see. Right. You know, I still saw my opponent. So I just, I was just like, just keep hitting him. And I start feeling the more that round was, uh, we getting deeper into the round. I felt his power getting less. And I thought just let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. Felt his power. Um, yeah. Dripping off slowly and just, yeah. Starting to get the upper hand, even though I was, uh, it was a 10 eight round for him, of course. Uh, your cut man, I think he did a great job as well. He did an amazing job. Yeah. I was so happy he was there. Um, in glory, do you pick? Is it like boxing where you get to pick your own cut man, or is it like the UFC where they assign the cut man to you? Uh, it's different. It's different because normally uh, glory has the has the cut has their standard cut men, but you are allowed to have your own cut men. So this time I have my own cut man. So I was really happy with. Oh him, wow. Uh, being there. What's his name? So everything just fall in, uh, fall into place. Stefan. Stefan. I mean, this guy, the, yeah. the cut man doesn't get, sometimes the cut man, in my opinion, they don't get enough credit because he, you know, a cut man can no, save a fight. Amazing, he did an amazing, yeah, 100%. He did an amazing job. And um, that's also what I told him after the fight. Like, I'm so, I was so happy you were there. And uh, he was there the whole time, even though uh, uh, through after the fight, he just, took care of me like the whole time you gotta go through all the all, the whole doping uh the doping thing and doping testing and everything he was there cooling it and making sure uh the wound was uh was was good treated well he closed it up and let the doctors look at it so yeah i was so happy with him so what a legend by the way when you touch it what does it feel like is it just numb at this point no no it's good it's good it's uh yeah, it's good. It's just, I feel the stitches. It's uh, yeah. You, it feels like uh, still, of course, a little bit bruised. Yeah. So it doesn't like it doesn't like hurt, but it's uh, yeah. Just I feel it. It is it's good. Now, what is this going to mean? I think it looks it looks worse than it. I think is, it's incredible. Than it actually feels. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to dress up for Halloween now. No. <laughs> so, so that's how I how I came home. Like to the kids, they were they. We're scared as hell. They were like, oh my God, dad, how are you? I said, it's okay. He said, I got my Halloween mask already. Yeah. So it's good. It's so funny because my four-year-old son, like uh, I'm, I'm very consistent with everything I do. So also with the recovery, whole day I put ice packs on it, ice packs on it. So uh, my son, in the beginning, he asked me, why are you doing that? 
He's four years old. And I said, um, well, to make it better, because then it goes away. So every time I put it on, I put it on. I said, Dad, is it gone yet? Huh. Said, yeah, I think so. So I take it off. Uh, and he looks at he looks at it and he looks at me like <laughs> No, it's still it's still there, Dad. Oh, oh man. It's the funniest thing ever. How, how many children do you have? Three. Two daughters and one uh, one boy. And what are their one ages? Boy. Ten, six, and four. The ten year old for sure, six maybe. Four is, are they watching live? The the oldest one watched the whole fight. Oh my god! And the mid, the middle one is like she's really a tough one, but she was scared, so she left it after the second round. <laughs> wow! And who are they watching? So, with? but afterwards, uh, with their mother. So, but we separated. But uh, I said, uh, but I told him like before uh, prehand. I said like, if you want to watch the fight. For me, you're allowed to watch the fight, but you gotta, if your mother allows you to watch the fight, it's good with me. But if she says you you gotta go to bed, you gotta go to bed, you'll watch it the day after. Wow. So the oldest one was really tough. She saw the whole fight, but afterwards, of course, uh, she had to cry like, oh, so I'm so happy, but oh my God, that looks like he's li- literally been to war. Yeah. So, um, but for me, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a scratch. You know, I just continue, I just do what I do best and that's, enjoy the fighting game you know i really i really love the this what i do and it's always so strange like now after a fight like this it feels like everything just comes towards you like oh my god this guy he's a fighter he has heart he showed it all today but i'm like I'm still the same guy. Yeah, yeah. I've been champion since 2013 just because of this fight. Now I'm like a uh, a validated yeah. champion for some kind of reason. I'm I'm still the same guy. I had I've had this heart like for <laughs> this whole time. It's just like I, I've never been pushed that far maybe, but I've been there. And for me like out uh, out uh, strategizing an opponent I love to do that, you know, because then it feels like my game plan was on point. But now I just got, I got rocked. The eye was bleeding and everybody was, ooh. But now, now I'm like a solidified champion, certified champion. So. <laughs> it's such a great it's, point. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why it's happened. Yeah. No, because I was going to ask you about that because, you know, in the past, some people say like, oh, like you're too dominant or you don't get in wars. You don't talk trash. You don't do yeah. this and that. And they'll give, you know, a lot of love to like a Badr Hari, who's obviously a lot different than you in terms of personality and funny stuff. And now you go through a war where you get rocked, where you get a cut and all this, and people love you more than when you're skunking a guy and winning every round very dominantly. It's a strange thing, yeah. but it happens, right? And I was wondering, I was it, wondering it, if you 100%. noticed it. I guess you did notice it. I, I did notice it. It's a, it's a strange thing for me. Um, like also after the, 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 in, after the so the post uh, fight, press conference everybody so a guy asked me like yo rico you know that your fan base today even grew bigger people love you even more i said i don't know uh but to be really honest i couldn't care less you know this is just what i do you know and if i get pushed to this limit that i gotta go and show heart and uh get a cut in my face and look like Frankenstein to for the people to 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 notice that then that is what it is but I've always been this person I've always been the same guy it's just like I, I haven't been in this in this type of situation before but you know for me it is what it is I just enjoy what I'm doing and that's the most important thing and if we put up a good show yeah then we do it but for me like like I said out strategizing a person or an opponent is also a great victory for me because of course I hope like not every fight I'm going to look like this. Yeah, of course. I mean, you don't want that. Um, and your true fans would prefer that than this. I think some people want to see you get like in a way humanized and want to see you deal with adversity, see you dig down deep. And then once you do, it kind of reminds me of a champion in the UFC, Alex Volkanovsky, who's so dominant, Mm -hmm. who hasn't lost, who, who like, you know, all his fights for the most part have been, um, one sided in his favor or not the most exciting, but he's never 
met with adversity. And then in his last fight, he almost got choked out a couple times and now everyone loves him and respects yeah, him. I saw that one. You know what I mean? Against yeah. Ortega. It's, it reminds me of the same thing. Now yeah. it's like the same, this is the same dude that's been here for five years beating everyone. But yeah. now people like him. Yeah. So you know what it's like. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Yeah, so but it is what it is, you know. It's uh, I understand it for the people, you know. This was like a, it looked like a movie scene, so <laughs> you know everybody's like uh, so people friends of me after the fight said, oh, this must look like 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 that Rocky movie, like in Rocky Four, like he didn't see with one eye and he see double or so. Said I see three opponents, Polly, which one do I need to hit? Yeah, hit the middle one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said no, nah, whatever. On that side, I I saw everything perfect, but this this side was almost closed. But I was just like, keep just keep going, just keep uh, yeah, keep pushing, and yeah, that's what I do best. Do you think that? Uh, of course, he took this fight on short notice because of uh, Alistair having to withdraw. Do you think that? Yeah. Because of the fact that he took it on short notice, the gas tank wasn't there. If he's taking this fight, you know, with a full training camp, maybe he's able to you know, withstand that and keep on going or, or even give you an even tougher fight. What do you think? Mm, no, I don't think so because, uh, I don't know how people approach it. And he also said the same, the same thing because of course people also asked him the same question, but he, he trained for, at his very best, uh, to fight, uh, Benjamin Alibui on the same event that night. All right. That was for a, a, a three round fight, but, I don't think to, uh, if I, um, because that's the, the easiest way, if I mirror it at myself and I always try to be a better version of me every day, every fight, you try to evolve, you try to get better. So I'm not looking at like, oh, I got to do the three rounds or I got to do five rounds because like in the beginning of the year, uh, 10 days, uh, on 10 days notice, instead of doing a five round fight, I got into a tournament two times three rounds. So it was also different for me, but I didn't train for that, but it doesn't matter because you just got to make sure you're there in top, in top shape. Mm -hmm. So if it's three rounds and three rounds, if it's five rounds, it's five rounds, it's 10, it's 10. It is what it is. You just got to be there and be in the best version of you every time. And, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know how other people approach it, but maybe people train even harder when they fight for the heavyweight championship, but that's never how I approach it. I've been doing this my whole life and every training, every fight that came up, I just wanted to be a better version of the fight that I did before. So I just want to be in top shape. What, how, how many rounds it was, I didn't care. Do you think they're going to... So that's, how I, that's how I look at it. Do you think they're going to try to run it back again now? Because it was such a I don't great know. fight. I th mm, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, but not not on really short notice. I think uh, he needs to get back at it. Needs to get a, a couple of wins and let's do it. Because yeah, you know it's it's every time, or else he's gonna be number four. Right. You know, and I think people are gonna get a little bit tired of Rico fighting the same guys every time. Yeah, yeah. Because of course you fought him. Uh, what was it? 2017, I think. Um, yeah. And. Uh, and, and I mean, it was an all-time classic. I think a lot of fans would be excited about that, but uh, I think they were probably more excited about the idea of fighting you, of you fighting Alistair Overeem. Uh, it was such a big fight yeah. that had been talked about for so long. Do you think that will be the next one now? I don't know. I don't know. Let's just see how uh, how we heal up. What happened you know, to the, him? When the stitches, I don't know. It's uh, something with his back or something. I don't know. Okay. That's what I heard. I, uh, yeah. I have no clue. Yeah, maybe you can ask him. Uh, what, what? But um, they even said they. Uh, I even heard like he came to the Netherlands with the. So during the time of the interview uh, we did that day, he already had the uh, the injury. That's what that's what he said. So yeah, I don't know. Let's just see what what Glory uh, has in mind, and let's just see how I recover from this. You know, when you found out that he was out considering how big of a deal that fight was, not just in kickboxing, but in the Netherlands as well. What was your reaction? Was it deflating? Yeah, of course. Like, hmm. Okay, again, another one. Because last time in January, it, I was supposed to fight Jamal, and he uh, also uh, withdrew from the fight like 10 days or 12 days before the fight. 
So, and this time it was the same. And like in years and years of being champion, it never happened. And now in six, seven months, it happened twice. So, but I was just like, okay, uh, who's next? Hmm. They said, yeah, they want you to fight Jamal. Okay, let's go. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, I'm I'm so easygoing. I don't like, uh, yeah. I just bent. I just bent. I just like, uh, like, like Bruce Lee said, you know, I'm like water. <laughs> you know, if you pour me in a glass, I'm the glass. If you pour me in a cup, I'm a cup. So I just go with the flow. You know, just um, there's so many things that can happen. It, it's life, right? It's like every, for me, my opponent is there when he's across from me in the ring. And before that, every day can change because you never know what might happen, right? So I was just happy we could uh, replace this. Uh, yeah, we had an amazing fight with Alistair and I was just happy we could replace it with an, another amazing fight and maybe again, fight of the year. So, By the way, what were your impressions of him when you were at the press conference with him uh, just a couple of weeks ago when you were with Alistair and the face-off and all that stuff? What were your impressions? It was good. Good vibe. Um, respectful. But I didn't really expect it anything else because he's a respectful guy. He doesn't talk trash. And yeah, and I think everything was was there. You know, he said everything right. I think I am the best kickboxer he ever's gonna he's gonna ever face. So yeah, I just uh and yeah, you give me the respect, you get the respect back. So respect uh, is earned, not given. So Man, I would love to see that. I would still love to see it. I think it would be one of the biggest fights because it would draw the MMA fans over. Obviously, it would be huge for kickboxing as well. Um, the scene was great on Saturday. How do you how do you say the uh, the arena name? I don't want to butcher it. How do you say that that stadium? No, Gerardom. Gerardom. Yeah, it, it's it, in 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 the Netherlands. Yeah, is the 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 G is like really 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 hard. Okay, Gelderdom, but maybe Gelderdom. you say Gelderdom. Yeah, Gelderdom. Okay, uh, what was it like for you? You know, pandemic, all that stuff to now be in front of what was it, twenty thousand, thirty thousand people? Uh, closer to twenty. Okay, twenty. We were allowed to to fill it up like two thirds. Okay. Oh, it was. Uh, we were really happy with. Yeah, it was amazing. It was it was amazing to to be with the fans again and coming out and seeing all the the phone lights yeah. on, it, everybody going crazy, and of course me doing my famous walkout run. I was just like fired up. I was really excited with that because, yeah, earlier that year <laughs> in January, I did the same thing. In a like it was also an arena, but like all the seats were empty. That was strange. That was really strange. So it was. I was really happy for everybody that that came out and bought the pay per view because that was yeah. Of course, for Glory, it's a whole new new way of of, of working with this whole pay per view thing, and it, it's working, and people are are loving it and enjoying it, and also appreciating it more. I think. Why? Because when you can look, at, yeah, I think because when you can look at something for free, I think people take it for granted. Mm. Now they got to pay for it and they get it. They see, they get a night of amazing kickboxing fights. I think that's, that's huge. Mm. That's huge. And I think that's also the only sustainable way for an organization like Glory to maintain and keep doing what they're doing and keep growing. Yeah, I know that was a big topic of discussion going into this fight because here in America, pay-per-view is very common. Everything's behind the pay-per-view yeah. paywall. In Europe, not so much. And I know like, you know, the UFC, when they have it every so often, the fans complain a lot and, oh, I can't believe it to pay. Maybe they they get a little spoiled, maybe because it's in the middle of the night. I don't know. But I know the, the Glory fans initially were complaining. Did you get a lot of those complaints or did you get a lot of people who actually appreciated the fact that, you know, they were getting a top quality event um, and just had to pay a little more for it. No, of course. Um, I understand what you're saying, but I definitely also got, got the complaints because uh, I think here in the Netherlands, we're a little bit spoiled. Yeah. Because everything's for free. Everything's yeah. for free. Uh, free. Everything uh, comes with a subscription. So if you if you subscribe to something, um, to a certain network, you get 
uh, Formula One. You get soccer and everything is included for a certain price. And then, oh, but I want to watch Glory Kickboxing and it's not included. Oh, I got to pay. I got to pay even more. Come on. That's too much. That's how yeah, much yeah, yeah. people are thinking. So and actually, it's the the most common thing, like in other big countries, in, in England, in, in Germany, in the U.S., it's the most common thing to pay just a little bit more for whatever you want to watch, right? So, and I think now they start appreciating it a little bit more as well. So it's just it's just getting used to the to the new vibe, and I think that's the, the same with everything, right? It's uh, we've been going through this whole pandemic. It's like, for example, wearing masks. The beginning, I was like, oh, that is fucking me, blah blah. And then after a certain point, everybody just wears a mask, like it's 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 easy or keep the keep the distance from each other or whatever, you know? It's yeah. just like uh, getting used to the new situation. Before I let you go, I have to ask you this. So in my opinion, the three baddest men on the planet right now are you, yeah. Tyson Fury, and Francis Ngannou. MMA champion, kickboxing champion, and boxing champion. Thanks. If you had your choice, who would interest you more? Tyson Fury, Rico Verhoeven, Francis Ngannou, Rico Verhoeven. If, to decide who is the king of kings, who is the baddest man on the planet. Uh, but th I think that would depend on, like, on what ground you you like. Mixed rules. I think. So you mean? Oh, just uh, so go into boxing and then one round, like so, yeah, like same. one round boxing, one round kickboxing, one round MMA, one round kickboxing. You get your kickboxing because oh, you're, you're doing it, but the other round has to, yeah. you know, it's a five round fight has to be one, 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 one. Well, to be really honest, you know. Um, me and Tyson, we talked about this years and years back. Really? So, like, yeah, because yeah, we like I said, we 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 trained like mm -hmm. for years and years together. Like also before I was champion, and like last year, uh, we finally met after not seeing each other for a few years. And then I said, "How crazy is this?" We both said it. Like I was going to be kickboxing champion, you were going to be boxing champion. Said so we both did it. This is this is amazing. But like back then, he said like uh, I, I taught him some kicks and I hold a pass for him. So oh, I want to do a kickboxing fight, man. <laughs> said let's do it. So how crazy would that be? Like if he would uh, like clean out the division in, in boxing. And well, I already did, I think the same with, with kickboxing. So that we would maybe make a, a fight one in me going to boxing with him oh. and him coming to kickboxing with me. Wow. And let's see what happens. You'd be okay and, with yeah, that, even yeah, though you're I friends? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, because that's, yeah, you know, it's just business and it's just, and also it's just fun. You know, I literally uh, see that as, as enjoyment because that's that's what we do, you know. We compete, we fight, and even though we're friends, we want to fight. You want to show that you're the best. So I think that would be my most, um, yeah, my most exciting like dream and step to to make like maybe in the future if he's open for it as well. All right, I'm gonna call him up and let him know. Yeah, let's do it. Let's All right, do it. call me back. Call me I will, back. I will. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, sir? Uh, that yeah, would be incredible. What a know, scene. You, uh, you don't know. People don't know, but he got kicks. Really? He can kick. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. He has power in his legs. He's tall. He's he, a big boy. And he knows, and because he 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 wants to learn so bad that when he kicks, like, oh damn, there's this power and mass behind it. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Wow, I bet the knees are are pretty deadly as well. Uh, that would be quite the scene. What we saw on Saturday was quite the scene. Congratulations on an incredible fight. Thank you for the 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 entertainment, for showing the heart that you did. Uh, rest up, heal up soon, my friend. Great to talk to you as always and looking forward to your next fight. Thanks for having me, Ariel. And again, thank you so much for the big compliment for being one of the baddest men on the planet. Of course. That's what we try to do. Just uh, enjoy it and yeah, you know, uh, put our legacy there and be somewhere with lined up with the greats one day so you are thanks. appreciate it have a good show and talk to you soon all right thank you so much there he is the reigning defending glory kickboxing heavyweight champion the one and only rico verhoeven 